In this tutorial we're going to learn how to make a deep grooving trance bass line using a very very simple saw bass from the ESM with some additional processing in the channel strip, quite significant uh, processing in the channel strip uh, to play this melody here, or this bass line rather here. So before we delve into the processing and what's being done here to create the sound let's just have a listen to what we're actually going to create okay We'll also listen to it in the context of how it might sound with a kind of progressive trance track with an extra melodies and chords and harmony put in, etc. So deep grooving bass line is often used in trance tracks that are more of a progressive nature and um, quite often at slightly slower tempos as well. So let's just undo all this processing and we'll go through it one at a time to see what's being done here. So we'll just solo this and put the loop back on. So to start with we've got just a very very simple saw wave no square filters fully open with no resonance so it really is just a basic saw patch um, and there's no sort of filter uh, modulation being applied and the amplitude envelope is just keeping the notes sustained for as long as they last in the MIDI region and there's no particular uh, nothing special with the amplitude envelopes uh, going on at all and the same with the effects as well there's not being any overdrive added to the sound so let's just have a listen to the basic raw waveform. So that basic saw could be used off any synthesizer. It wouldn't have to be the ESM. Any third party or any, any particular synth that you can get with a saw wave will work perfectly well. So the processing on this is what makes the sound really shaped and what makes it kind of come alive. So I'm just going to have a look at the first three processes that we add in here. Um, the first one we're going to add is some overdrive. So we haven't added it in the synth part, we're adding it in as an insert effect just to show that this can be how the uh, effects are put together and how the sound is kind of broken down into its constituent parts. You can do this on the synthesizer itself if you want to. So any synth that you do have an overdrive function on, you can do it there uh, instead of here. There's no, no need to do it as an insert. Uh, this is just to show the process. So we'll turn that on and have a little listen. And we're overdriving quite a lot and making up the, the output volume uh, roughly in line with how much we're overdriving it and we're keeping the low pass filter fully open. So it should be very bright. So we can hear the tone changes just slightly and it makes it actually a little bit deeper with that on there because it's adding harmonics to the lower part and the higher part of the saw is already very bright but the lower part is getting these extra harmonics through the distortion. So the next thing we're doing here is we're adding in a low shelf EQ and essentially a low mid-range scoop, relatively wide Q. So we're nipping from 100 hertz up to nearly 2k at some degree, not much in those further sections but we're really nipping out the middle stuff here the low mids from around 200 hertz up to around 500 is where this is really centered and the attenuation is really going to be noticeable so i'm just going to turn these on one by one as it plays through so you can hear what's happening to the sound So we 
can hear there that we really take out some of that low mid-range mud it's sometimes referred to and it really clears up the tone uh, quite significantly with this low shelf eq as well we're adding quite a bit of presence to the bass quite a bit of low energy weight to the sound there by about six and a half db centered at around 80 hertz so everything below that gets boosted quite nicely next we have a compressor just added in to just nip a couple of dbs off the top of the peaks of uh, the sound here as well just to rein those in a touch um, it's relatively level and relatively consistent bass synth patch anyway so there's not a lot of need for compression but this is just to nip a tiny bit of it off next we have a couple of other processes here that really help shape the bass line here so the first of which is a chorus which often gets used on bass synths and bass sounds it's just a type of detuning modulation that will really make the sound glimmer uh, and it will really kind of add a bit of sparkle to the sound and make it feel a bit wider as well so especially in those higher frequencies we really notice those uh, modulates and those wobbles a bit in tune to do with the tuning um, so the chorus is a really really good effect to use on bases as well. We can use a mega wide one and just hear the difference. So it really thickens up the texture of the sound but we're going to go for this glimmering chorus preset which doesn't disturb the lower frequency so much in the stereo spectrum and the stereo field. It just really changes the high frequency so we want to keep it like that. So we're going to use that glimmering chorus there. Next we've got a uh, high pass filter going up to 40 hertz just to get rid of any unnecessary frequencies and um, stuff that isn't really important to the sound. It's going to be a very deep bassy tone centered around 80 hertz anyway. So anything below 40 is really just taking up headroom um, that could be used for sort of loudness maximization etc. So this is just a bit of housekeeping to high pass filter up to 40 hertz. So we can hear that it does change the tone slightly, but not really in a detrimental way. And if we put the kick track on. We can hear that actually it makes a little bit more room for the kick as well. So the kick, the low end of the kick is a little bit more defined with that filter on there. And finally, we're going to add a low pass filter as well. Um, so this is really going to take off some of those high frequencies and kind of muffle them slightly. So it doesn't sort of mask or um, interfere with the rest of the melody parts here. So we'll just turn that on and have a listen. <laughs> We want to keep some of the high frequencies in there. We don't really want to do a full kind of low pass filter effect like you might do with a sort of sub uh, bass line in trance. We want a little bit of this to poke through because it, of its grooving nature and it will just let it cut through the mix a little bit if you leave some of the high frequencies still in there. So that's why the filter is, is relatively high still. Uh, and we'll just have a listen again to, to that in context. So that works really nicely. You can still hear a lot of that um, chorus, higher frequency parts in there, but it's not so bright that it's going to interfere with any of our lead parts there. And finally, we have a bit of sidechain compression, uh, and we've got two copies of it in series to really make this pump along with the kick drum. So we want the 
bass line to duck out of the way in volume when every kick drum is struck. So we're just going to unmute all the things that say sidechain on them and solo those as well. So we're going to hear the switched on and then it should clear up a lot of space and make more clarity for the kick drum to pull through in the mix as well and should really makes the bass line bounce quite a lot. There you can really hear that the, with the sidechain compression on the kick really pulls through a lot more and it makes the bass and uh, kick drum part work in synchronization much more effectively so sidechain compression is quite a common tool to use on a really deep grooving bass line like this anything where the midi part and the notes are going to overlap with beats one two three and four of the bar as well so anytime there's a note like that there those are actually falling on at the same time as the beat so these are being ducked out in volume for the very beginnings of them to let the kick pull through and then the volume ramps back up so it works really nicely on a bass line like this And you can see that there's some quite heavy handed comp side chain compression going on there. You see it's up to 10 dBs or more on each. And because these are in series as well, that effect is actually being, um, being magnified as well and emphasized more than that uh, would initially show. And the only reason I've done that in series is because I don't really want the one single compressor to be working as hard as reducing stuff by sort of minus 20 or uh, up to sort of minus 30 on one compressor. I find it tends to work a little bit better in series if you need to do some really, really heavy handed sidechain compression. Usually anything above six decibels will usually do quite nicely but because his bass line is, is so big and it's so um, hefty uh, in terms of its kind of holistic quality, it really does need ducking out of the way even more to work with the whole uh, mix and the whole tracks in context. So that's pretty much how you make that sort of deep grooving bass line sound that you commonly find in sort of progressive trance tracks. And let's just have a little listen to the bass line with the drums and the melodies and pads, etc., to hear it in context and see how it works when you put all the kind of elements together. 